So tomorrow we're going to be doing a lab in class that has to do with a type of chemical that you haven't seen before. It's something called a hydrate. Um, and the beginning of this lab talks about how there are some chemicals that just naturally absorb moisture from the air. So a classic example of that is calcium chloride that we use that uh, on icy streets and sidewalks in the winter to melt the ice. That calcium chloride can absorb the moisture from melted ice. It kind of acts like a sponge. It sucks it up and it's able to keep the roads dry and safer to drive on. We're going to be looking at the type of chemical that's actually the opposite of that, something called a hydrate. And the hydrates already have water attached to them, so they're not going to act like a sponge and absorb moisture because they already have water attached to them. But what's kind of weird about hydrates is even though they contain a significant amount of water, they're perfectly dry to the touch. They have a dry, powdery, sandy kind of texture to them. You would never know that there's water trapped inside the crystals. Um, one thing about hydrates is that they contain a very specific amount of water to compound. So if you saw this chemical formula, NiSO3.6H2O, the dot that you see there means that there are six water molecules attached to each nickel to sulfite formula unit. But if we scale that up and put it in terms of moles, rather than individual molecules, we could say that each mole of that nickel to sulfite is attached to six moles worth of water. But how do they find that mole ratio? What we're gonna do in the lab is heat up our hydrate. Uh, the water portion of your hydrate is able to break free and evaporate, and then it just leaves the anhydrous stuff behind, the without water stuff and we can compare the masses and therefore the moles of the compound before and after heating. Uh, so when we do that comparison of masses, that allows us to figure out how many moles of water there must be for every mole's worth of anhydrous compound. So I'm gonna show you an example today of how to solve for a chemical formula of a hydrate. So let's say we had a hydrated form of sodium acetate, and we're trying to figure out how many moles of water are attached to each sodium acetate formula unit. So let's say you, at the beginning of the lab, you get the mass of this hydrated form, 6.55 grams, then you heat it up, the water evaporates and it leaves just the anhydrous stuff behind the without water part and that weighs 3.95 grams. What we're trying to figure out is how many moles of water are attached to each sodium acetate. To solve for that, first thing we have to do is figure out what sodium acetate even is. So our sodium acetate, sodiums plus one, acetate C2H3O2 has a minus one charge. So there's our sodium acetate. We're gonna be starting with a hydrated form of it. We just don't know how many waters are there. So this part is called the hydrate. We're gonna apply some heat to that hydrate and the heat breaks that attraction between the water molecule and the sodium acetate. So they basically go off in two separate directions. The sodium acetate will stay behind inside the test tube. That part is either called the anhydride or the anhydrous salt, and then the water evaporates away. We know that the hydrate in this problem starts with a mass of 6.55 grams and that the anhydrous part after the water evaporates weighs 3.95 grams. Due to the law of conservation of matter and the law of conservation of mass, 
If the whole thing started with a mass of 6.55 grams and the sodium acetate part of that weighs 3.95 grams, that must mean that 2.60 grams worth of water must have evaporated away. So we know the mass of this part. Usually, when we're doing empirical formula problems, we take masses and convert them to moles to find mole ratios between elements. When you're doing a hydrate problem, the math is just like an empirical formula problem, except instead of finding mole ratios of elements, you're going to look for mole ratios of compounds. So I'm going to take that 3.95 grams of sodium acetate, and I'm going to convert that guy into moles, just like an empirical formula problem. In order to do that, we need the molar mass of sodium acetate. If you add up one sodium, two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens on the periodic table, you'll get a molar mass of 82 grams. That's how much one mole's worth of sodium acetate weighs, the anhydrous kind without the water attached. I'm going to keep a few extra decimal places for right now, just like an empirical formula problem, because we're not done yet. Next up is figuring out how many moles worth of water there is. So we know that 2.60 grams worth of water evaporated. Let's convert that guy into moles. Molar mass of water is 18 grams if we added up two hydrogens and one oxygen. And if we do 2.60 divided by 18, we're going to get 0.14444 moles worth of water. And again, just like an empirical formula problem, when you get here, we want to find not just actual amount of moles, but mole ratios. To get the mole ratio, we divide everybody by the little guy. Between these two numbers, the 0 0.04811, that guy is the smaller number. So I'm going to divide this guy by itself and get 1. And I divide this guy by the 0 0.048 number. And that's going to give you roughly 3. So what does that mean? That means for every 1 sodium acetate, I have 3 moles worth of water attached. The name we would give to this hydrated form is sodium acetate try hydrate. Three waters are attached to each sodium acetate formula unit. 